welcome to Modern Christian Mysticism. My name is Emmy Zhang. I am a Christian astrologer, an intuitive reader, and I'm the folk herbalist behind M Apothecary. Today I want to talk about shadow work and Christianity. So last week we talked briefly about inner child work. Shadow work is another type of introspective spiritual growth, personal growth practice that is very popular nowadays and has a lot of amazing benefits for your everyday life as well as your spiritual growth. So first I want to begin this podcast by just reading a really lovely explanation of what is shadow work for those of you who maybe this is a new term for you guys. So this explanation, it's a few paragraphs long. It comes from GoWithinSpiritualCoaching.com and I just think that they describe it really well. Um, Sometimes I I feel like I ramble, so I'm going to read it directly so we have a clear introduction today, okay? What is shadow work? To understand what shadow work is, you must first be conscious of your shadow. The shadow, according to Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung, consists of those parts of ourselves we choose to repress or hide, parts of ourselves that we don't like. We do that by pushing them down into our unconscious during childhood. So breaking away from reading for a second, last week we talked about um, the inner child and how you go from this free, expressive, authentic state of the inner child into adolescence where we begin sometimes purposefully changing our personalities and pushing down some parts of the inner child that we don't like or that we have been sort of picked on in society for or gotten in trouble for. So that's exactly what this is talking about. We push parts of ourselves that we don't like down into our unconscious during that transition phase from childhood into the teenage years. Several examples of shadow aspects are selfishness, aggressive impulses, being self-centered, arrogance, shameful experiences, and fears. These aspects lead to certain types of behaviors, such as criticizing someone else that has your flaws, so projecting on other people, letting people know that you're entitled, judging people unfairly, so having hidden biases, and always being the victim. So those are typical shadow traits that can manifest. They go on to write, many negative issues that affect your life can result by keeping your shadow hidden and locked away. These kinds of issues include addictions, uncontrollable rage or anger, social anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorders, sexual deviancy, depression, self-sabotage, neuroticism, and limiting beliefs. So shadow work is the process of exploring these aspects within our unconscious, within our shadow. And shadow work is the endeavor you enter into on your own to explore and eventually incorporate, reincorporate these traits into the conscious mind. There are various means we can use to do this, but first you have to actually acknowledge your shadow, then embrace and befriend it. It is only by bringing these aspects to the surface that you can begin to live authentically, discover your inner wisdom and life purpose, and gain access to your soul or higher self. And then they have a quote here by Carl Jung. He said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Okay, so that is a great explanation of what shadow work is. What is the shadow? What is the goal of shadow work? Um, And so just from reading that, maybe you can already identify a few things that occur in your life that may be caused by these unconscious parts of your personality controlling you. 
If you've ever gone through life and felt like the same frustrating patterns kept happening over and over and you didn't understand why and you felt like you were trapped by it and you couldn't escape it, that could be your shadow controlling you. Addictions, sexual deviancy, self-sabotage, limiting beliefs, anxiety and anger. These are all really common things that people deal with all the time and they all come from a misunderstanding or unawareness of the shadow self. So this is important work to do and it can help lots of different areas of your life. Um, for example, let me say in my own life, I've had a serious problem with different limiting beliefs about uh, sexuality because of my upbringing in the church. You know, human beings are sexual by nature, right? Most of us anyway. And that's not something that was really discussed ever in an acceptable or positive light in my church upbringing. And so my sexual nature, however small it was as a young person, was repressed because, you know, we couldn't talk about it. It wasn't something that we were allowed to experiment with or really discuss openly. So my sexuality was really repressed at a young age and it became a part of my shadow self to the extent that as an adolescent, I had a lot of limiting beliefs and almost like self-sabotage techniques and defense mechanisms when it came to sexuality, that my sexuality didn't present in a healthy way, in a way that was, um, you know, freeing and honoring to who I am as a child of God until much later, until I had done a lot of soul searching and a lot of shadow work and thankfully had a partner who was extremely loving and caring um, and allowed me to be myself because that wasn't in my mindset. I just had so much unconscious anxiety and repression and frustration around sexuality that it really caused problems that I thought were like who I was or were not escapable, you know, not things that I could learn a new way or grow out of. So I'm being a bit vague around it just because, you know, it's a personal topic. And I think shadow work in general is a very personal topics for people because it stems from these parts of ourselves that are repressed, parts of ourselves that we don't like and are maybe ashamed of or have fear surrounding. So when you do start a practice of shadow work, like inner child work, it can be very vulnerable to start to look into these areas of yourself that you have repressed into your unconscious um, and actually begin to, as the article said, befriend them and eventually bring them into the conscious personality. And the way that we do that, I think, as Christians is a bit different, should be a bit different than how general New Age spiritual practices teach shadow work integration, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So I do want to pause and ask the question, is it important for Christians to do shadow work? Because whenever we start taking on some new spiritual practice, I think as Christians, it's important to stop and remember I'm a Christian first, if I'm a Christian, and whatever spiritual practice or intuitive development tools that I'm using, I need to first check with my relationship to Holy Spirit, I need to check in my conscious, um, and really make sure that my intentions for this spiritual work align with my faith, because as a Christian, we should be focusing on our faith first, not just, oh, let me try every single spiritual new practice that I can think of, right? So as Christians, is it important for us to do shadow work? I think obviously the answer is yes, because the goal of shadow work, really the end goal, is to gain self-awareness of our unconscious so that we can end these, these traits, these habits, these destructive patterns in our life that control us. 
And as Christians, we're not supposed to be controlled by any of this kind of stuff, right? Addictions, sexual deviancy, anger, extreme anger, anxiety, all of those things, the Bible says we should not be controlled by them, right? Those are what the Bible calls, you know, fleshly patterns or the old ways of the flesh. We shouldn't be overwhelmed by our wrath that bubbles up from the unconscious and takes over us. We shouldn't, as children of God, be paralyzed by anxiety, right? We should have a spirit of power and freedom as children of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit and walking in faith. We shouldn't be letting sexual deviancy and addictions cloud our minds and take us away from the present moment or from connection with the sanctity of our bodies, right? So if the goal is to eventually get rid of all of those self-destructive patterns, then yes, shadow work is a good practice for Christians to be doing. On top of that, I think that Christian people or people of faith especially really need to look into shadow work specifically because we have a lot of hidden biases. We project our issues, our hidden sins onto others all the time, don't we? I know I have and do. I know that I struggle with self-righteousness and judging other people. And the Bible talks about taking the plank out of your own eye before you comment on the speck of dust in someone else's eye. And that's something I have to remind myself of a lot. Just because I don't act on some of these repressed, shadowy aspects of myself, um, you know, I maybe maintain a righteous exterior, that doesn't mean that they're not still part of my unconscious self, my shadow self right? So there's still a plank in my eye. There's still a plank in your eye. There's still something we have to work on. And so shadow work, this process of examining these issues within ourselves and bringing them to light is a really helpful defense against self-righteousness, which is something all Christians need to be aware of. I also think that shadow work is especially important for Christians because there is a lack of open communication about sin, about sexuality, about addictions, just everything. I feel that there is a lack of open communication in faith communities. And so people of faith, maybe even more so than non-believers, have tons of repressed issues because we just don't talk about it. We're embarrassed to be judged by members of the faith community. Um, in, you know, in my case, I think, not just my parents, but that whole generation of our parents was not so great at communicating about things like sexuality or the kinds of intense emotional experiences that we all have. I was raised, you know, don't, don't shout at each other, don't argue, just if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And so I think a lot of emotional and difficult conversations get shut down um, in this culture, at least the faith culture that I was raised in. And so whenever you have a lack of open communication about your real struggles, your real feelings on something, and particularly those real struggles and feelings that are not in line with God, right? If you can't talk about that to someone you trust, then how are you supposed to get good advice? How are you supposed to grow? You don't. You just have this thought that, oh no, I'm, I'm bad because not every single thought I have perfectly aligns with Christ as a 13 year old. So repress, 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 repress. And then we end up projecting on others, judging others, and having all of these secret shadow programs in our unconscious that are just as sinful, just as controlling and addictive as everybody else. But we don't understand them because we haven't talked about them enough to actually overcome them and bring them into the light so we can mature past those bad habits, right? 
So for Christians and people of faith especially, shadow work is key to get that open communication going, even if it's just within yourself, right? When you start doing shadow work and start looking at these um, darker, unconscious, repressed areas of yourself, you're probably not going to want to share that with others right away. At least not in great detail. Because like I said, these are very personal issues that we hide, even from ourselves. That's how personal they are. We hide them from ourselves, and that's why they become the shadow self. So when I talk about an open communication, being able to heal these things, if you didn't get that open communication in your faith community or in your family as a young person, you probably have some bad shadow programs around that topic now, like I did with sexuality. But if you can at least begin to open up that communication within yourself and explore those areas that you've repressed um, and contemplate them honestly with yourself, that's when we start to overcome the controlling side of the shadow self. Um, and a final thing that I think makes shadow work super important, especially for Christians, is this idea that within the shadow self, we hold all of our hidden biases. 2020 was a year that a lot of us discovered hidden biases and really had to think seriously about some issues and realize that there was some places within ourselves that we didn't even know we held a bias or we had some sort of negative opinion of others or a blind spot to how society treated others, right? And I think this happens a lot in faith communities as well because a lot of faith communities are really homogenous groups. So I've heard it said that the most segregated place in America is church on Sunday. Yikes. Um, but yeah, growing up, I think my churches, all the different churches that I went to were at least 90% white people, white rural folks. The school that I went to was like 95% white rural folks. Um, but focusing on the faith communities, yeah, churches tend to be really separated based on race. And so we end up in these pockets of people that are supposedly just like us. They look like us, they talk like us, and we're all conditioned to talk about the same things, you know, speak the same way. If you've ever heard of Christianese, we all have this sort of language that we speak. We quote the same Bible verses and use the same phrases, and it becomes a really closed community where faith Faith circles like this lack alternative perspectives a lot of the time. And this is literally a breeding ground for unconscious biases to grow up in us. And I think the church is the last place we should have unconscious biases, particularly towards other human beings. And unfortunately, it happens all the time. So if you think back on your churches, maybe you were blessed to be in a really, um, you know, mixed group of people, people from all different backgrounds, all different ethnicities, all different races, people who shared differently about their faith and challenged what other people said and had real dialogues in Sunday school instead of just, you know, nodding and finding the Bible verse. That's like a fantasy church. I've never been to a church like that, if you have please comment below and tell me which church it is because I want to come there. That's never been my experience. Um, and so, yeah, I think that the lack of that kind of open dialogue, really ethnically, culturally mixed church, the lack of that just breeds shadow stuff. We end up with all of these repressed issues that we never talk about. We end up with unconscious biases and we just push all of these parts of ourselves down so far down into the subconscious, into the unconscious, that we end up on the outside looking like really righteous people. And on the inside, 
We have a whole lot of problems that we won't even acknowledge ourselves and they end up controlling us secretly. And that is the shadow self. So, once you understand what the shadow self is, <coughs> excuse me, then we begin the process of shadow work, which is getting introspective, really starting to ask ourselves these questions. What are my unconscious biases? What are these underlying desires of selfishness and entitlement and arrogance that control me secretly? that make me act in manipulative, secret ways to get what I want so that I seem like a great person. But down below, there is a shadowy desire that wants what it wants and it can get it without looking like a bad person. Ooh, that's scary. That's, that's me, like that's how, that's how I do bad stuff. Just straight up honest. I'm not the kind of person who does bad things openly. I had to learn that I have selfish intentions and I go about getting what I want in pretty nice ways that don't seem to rock the boat, but underneath it comes from a shadowy place that I didn't even realize until I began to do this shadow work. So you have to start looking deeper in yourself and really questioning these underlying desires, fears, things you're ashamed of, like your sexuality or some kind of some kind of sin or some kind of thing that you couldn't talk about when you were younger um, that you repressed. But it's not gone. Nothing is ever gone, really. Um, Especially when we repress it. Repressing things for sure doesn't make it go away. It just makes it cement into your shadow personality. Okay, so let's move on. Um, and I want to talk about specifically, well, you know what, let's talk about where should we begin shadow work. I'm gonna, I have a little list here, but I'm gonna switch the order just to make it flow a little bit better here. So where should we start with our shadow work once we understand all of this? An easy place to start working on uncovering your shadow self is actually to look up shadow work prompts online uh, or on Pinterest. I know I'm such like an old white lady. I love Pinterest for this kind of stuff because they just have these nice little graphics. They're very clear. You can save them, take a picture of them, um, and there's just a lot of stuff on Pinterest so you can easily find many different options to work with. If you just go on Pinterest and search shadow work prompts, shadow work journal prompts, questions for shadow work, you will get so many different lists of questions you can start to ask yourself that will prompt you to examine these desires, fears, repressed issues within your unconscious. And once you start looking into it, you will begin to gain awareness of your shadow. So everyone's shadow self is different, as unique as each of us are, our, as each of us are, our shadow selves are just that unique, right? We each have our own shades of problems. So this is not a one size fits all kind of, my shadow has this problem, so yours does too, and here's how you fix it. It's not like that. This is an introspective, very personal spiritual practice where you yourself need to dig into your own unconscious and uncover your own hidden issues. So when we start answering all of these questions from a Pinterest list or a blog post that you find online, you will go through the process of journaling maybe, or just doing some 
serious self-reflection on all of these questions. And some of them may be like, this doesn't apply to me, this is stupid. I've, I've had that experience with some of these questions that come up. Um, and that's just because maybe my shadow self doesn't have that issue. But I guarantee you, you're going to get to a question on that list that scares you to answer it. Because it's asking you to look into yourself, a place within yourself that you don't like looking at. Because it's you've repressed it, you don't want to think about it, you don't want to acknowledge that it's there. You know what, let me quickly look on Pinterest. I'm just going to read from the first list I find. So I'm typing in shadow work journal prompts and like lists upon lists upon lists come up. I'm just going to click on the very first one. Um, oh, sorry, that one's, of course, the first one was journal prompts for self-growth. That's not what I looked up. Here we go. 35 journal prompts for shadow work. First question, it says, if I would write a letter to a person who hurt me, what would it say? So it's possible that you have repressed um, your ability to express hurt to other people and you're someone who just coasts along on the surface and doesn't deal with anything, right? Passive aggressive or just really turns away from confrontation. If you're that person, this question might be scary to you. If you have to sit down and actually journal and write out a confrontational letter saying, you hurt me. Here's another one, question two, it says, how do I react when something does not turn out the way it should? So this question would force you to, to see, do I react with anger? Do I react with anxiety? Do I react with manipulation? That's me, right? So it forces you to look, really look at yourself and see how you automatically respond to things. Because remember, these shadow programs, they're in the unconscious. So you're maybe not aware of them and they control you. So they come out as automatic responses to situations. And that's why the process of going through and answering questions and really journaling and exploring that answer within yourself is gonna start giving you a lot of insight into your shadow side. Let's just look um, at a few more. Which behavior that I know is wrong and has negative effects do I repeat over and over again? How long do I reflect on failures or mistakes? Do I have difficulty coming to terms with them or vice versa? Do I suppress such experiences? Am I honest with myself about my feelings? In what ways am I privileged? What do I take for granted? How do I lie to myself in daily life? What is the biggest promise I made to myself that I have broken? How does that make me feel? Think back on the last time a person triggered you. Can you see how the aspects of that person that triggered you are also in you? So see, some of these questions are just looking at yourself and others are forcing you to look at how you project your issues onto other people. Because projection is also a big part of shadow work, right? When we have parts of ourselves we don't like, that we repress, very often we um, project them onto others or we're really easily triggered by other people who do that. So um, once again, I'll give the example for myself. I had a lot of repressed sexual energy and as a younger person, I for sure judged other people very harshly for being sexually active. Because, you know, as a teenager, it was all be pure, wait till marriage, you know, don't talk about sex. And so that was something that like 
I repressed, 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 even though I didn't want to. And then when I would see other kids at school who were more, you know, promiscuous or sexually active at the time, I judged them hard for that. I was like, ugh, disgusted by that. Because I was disgusted by my own repressed sexual desires that I couldn't talk about. So that's how shadow work uh, really works, right? That's how the shadow self works. So yeah, first step to shadow work is seriously just go online and find a bunch of these questions and journal them, journal your responses and be honest with yourself. Because the whole thing is the shadow side is stronger when we don't acknowledge it. It controls us when we're not aware of it. So if you continue to be dishonest with yourself and turn a blind eye to these things that are not so pretty within yourself, you're not going to see any results. You're not going to grow if that's the case. You have to be honest with yourself. And honestly, it hurts. It's super vulnerable and upsetting to look into myself and see these things in me and to have to come to terms with them and figure out, well, okay, I see all this stuff in me that I repressed because I didn't like it. It's still there. Now I'm acknowledging it. What am I supposed to do? You know, do, do I just get down on myself? And to be honest, there is a period of time when you start doing your shadow work and you start acknowledging all of these prickly spots and shadowy spots within yourself. There's a period of time where you feel bad about yourself. And so I would say take it slowly with shadow work and mix in a lot of self-care. If you're going to be serious about shadow work, Maybe you want to answer, you know, two journal prompts a day, two journal prompts a week, you know, whatever your schedule and your emotional capacity allows. Set some kind of goal for yourself to journal in response to these questions. Be scathingly 1000% honest with yourself. Dig deep and then take time off to care for yourself and love your inner child. Because remember, the inner child is 100% authentic and feels all the feelings honestly. And then as we start growing up, we create the shadow self by repressing and changing the parts of the inner child that were shamed or quieted or that didn't work in society. So the inner child needs to be nourished while we do this inner child, uh, this shadow work, right? So that's why I wanted to speak about inner child work last week and shadow work this week, because I do think they go hand in hand. If you're just doing shadow work every single day, honestly, you might get really down on yourself and depressed. And you might feel like, oh, this spirituality stuff, this introspection stuff, it's horrible. It just makes me feel like a bad person. Whereas if you just do inner child work all the time, we're just like fluffing ourselves up and feeling so great about ourselves and accepting everything uh, as is and we're not actually doing any work to better ourselves as an adult because we're not going into the messy bits, really. We're just embracing authenticity. And so if we pair these two things together, we nourish, listen to, care for, love ourselves as our inner child, and we take the time to reflect on our issues and our hidden messy bits and untangle our defense mechanisms within the shadow self, the balance of those two things is going to produce lasting spiritual growth and maturity. And so, yeah, I really recommend pairing those two things together and even set a schedule for yourself. If you're someone who likes organization and scheduling like me, do a few prompts and then take a few days off for self-love, self-care and positive, happy inner child work and playtime. And then you're not gonna get so bogged down 
that it becomes a chore. You'll find yourself wanting to do the shadow work because you'll also be building self-love and you want to improve this person that you love. And part of improving is cutting out these nasty patterns of self-destruction and projection and cutting out these addictive behaviors that control us. Child of God, don't let anything control you. Lift up your inner child. Find that love that you have within yourself as a created, wonderful being and work to make that being, that inner child, better by doing this inner, uh, this shadow work for yourself. Wow, I keep getting those two mixed up. Hopefully this is making sense. Um, so as Christians, how might our shadow work look different than general new age shadow work? I touched on this just for a second before, but let me be really kind of clear and maybe a bit confrontational with you all right now, because I think sometimes we just throw the word Christian around and really we're just doing shadow work. We're like, oh, I'm a Christian and I'm doing shadow work, so this is Christian shadow work. That's not really how it works. Um, <laughs> we have to recognize that as Christians, our end goal with all of this spiritual stuff is not just to be like super zen, psychic girl, you know, with the powers. Um, no, the goal of all of this spiritual work is to become more like Christ, right? If you're a Christian, your highest self is your Christ-like self. So, if that is the case, we as Christians are not called to accept and love and embody every single natural urge that we have. Um, and that is the kind of talk that I hear a lot in New Age circles, especially around shadow work. People go into their shadow self, they discover, um, let's stay on sexuality, they discover their, their repressed sexual interests, and they're like, well, I'm going to befriend and love all of my repressed sexual interests, even the ones that are quite um, unhealthy, and I will embrace them, and I will do them. This is my highest self. I love myself. I will do whatever I want. As a Christian, that should not be the outcome of your shadow work. Yes, we are trying to embrace and befriend our shadow self to an extent. Um, and so that's the one phrase that I would disagree with slightly from that article I read at the beginning. Rather than embrace and befriend and fully incorporate all of our shadow stuff into our personality, the true goal, particularly if you're a Christian, should be to come to understand your shadow self, have grace for yourself, have love for yourself, and in love, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, work to elevate those shadow issues, understand them, untangle them, and we want to redeem them into positive, healthier versions of the behaviors, right? So our, our job and our goal as Christian shadow workers is not to become half light, half dark. I see that kind of language all the time in new age circles. People are like, I am not a full light being as a human. I am half light and half shadow and both sides are equally sacred. My shadow side is nasty. There's a lot of stuff in there that I'm not proud of, that I don't want in my personality and it was repressed for a reason right? Um, or, or the thing that was repressed, like sexuality. Sexuality is not sin, right? 
There's a time and a place, there are situations, there are ways we should go about it. We shouldn't be addicted, it shouldn't be controlling us. But sexuality is created by God, it's a gift. So sexuality itself is fine. It got repressed into my shadow side. And what happens when we repress things is they get really messed up in our unconscious and they turn into these dark, like confused versions of themselves. So the goal is to raise up the shadow version of my sexuality that I repressed and, and fix it, untangle the mess, redeem it, bring it into the light and express it in my conscious personality in the right ways that are part of the divine design and are pleasing to creator and are healthy in our relationships and are respectful of our bodies, right? So the goal is to elevate and untangle the shadow self and what we eventually draw out of those places are the totally fine and natural nuggets that we repressed in the first place. Um, yeah. So as you're doing your shadow work, Christian person, please don't be fooled by new age people who are telling you that everything is fine just the way it is. Recognize that there are parts of your shadow self that are not being expressed in a healthy way, that are quite confused, and very addictive and controlling of you. And those things are not sacred. And as someone who is trying to become like Christ, you should not just accept and love those bits of you for what they are. You should figure out how to express them in a healthy, non-repressed way. So it's a bit more complicated than just embracing your dark side for what it is. I hope that makes sense. Um, what else? What else? I think I've touched on all the big topics when it comes to just general shadow work introduction. If you guys have any questions about the basics of shadow work or questions about how as a Christian we should be doing our shadow work or going about these processes, um, drop your questions in the comments and either I'll answer them in the comments or I can make a part two of this video where I go more in depth into shadow work. I wanted to pair intro to inner child work and this sort of shadow work and Christianity stuff together because like I said, I do think they go together. And in my own life, I found that the more I did inner child work, the more shadow work stuff came up and vice versa. And so they pair really, really well together. And as we are now in the age of Aquarius, we are almost done with Capricorn season and heading into Aquarius season, we are going to be asked to think about a lot of this stuff, about how can I authentically embody myself and then in turn be my unique, powerful self in society in a way that elevates everyone. And as Christian spiritual people, we really need to be doing this shadow work and this inner child work so that we can start participating in what the collective is doing. Because right now I see lots of social participation from everybody and I'm not seeing as much effort from Christians, self-growth wise, introspection wise. We need to be people who are looking into ourselves, who are taking our thoughts captive, who are, you know, really thinking and going into our hearts and saying, is this feeling deceiving me? Is this bubbling up of anxiety and wrath deceiving me and controlling me and causing me to treat my fellow human poorly out of fear? out of an unconscious bias against them. Because if so, all of these things are coming from the shadow self. And the shadow self is the opposite of our Christ-like self, our highest self. So we Christians need to do a lot more work in these areas so that we can participate 
in the new changes that are happening in society so that our voices can be heard in a way that is really authentic and really self-aware. I am concerned that Christian people lack self-awareness. I absolutely did before I did a significant amount of inner child work and shadow work. So this is something that I want to challenge us to all be doing together. Do your inner child work, do your shadow work, and let's get the ball rolling together so that we can make a difference, a positive change in the world, and bring more light into our spaces come Aquarius season. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. If you have any questions or suggestions for a new podcast topic, feel free to email me at questionsmcm at gmail.com. I love hearing from you guys. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and ding the bell so that you won't miss any new videos. I'll see you next week. If you like this podcast, please follow me on Instagram and join the Patreon.